way, I do want to say that I don't know if you've all seen the new Facebook feature. Now, you all know the people you may know invites, of course, but now I'm getting people who would never friend a loser like you. <laughs> Let's start the show. Let's do. <laughs> Since 2020, we've done plenty of virtual comedy shows online. And though the virus is slowing, we'll keep going because we've still got lots of hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. Welcome to Virtual Comedy Show. It's a Zoom meeting with jokes. So please turn on your camera, turn on your mic, unless you have barking dogs or a rabid moose in your living room, in which case, please mute yourself for Pete's sake, and let's have some fun. It's the Virtual Comedy Show, starring Woody and Brad Tassel. Tonight, Steve and Brad welcome comedian Mark Yuppie! Plus funny songs from Todd Chappelle! And a patty melt from Patty Vasquez! And much, much more! Now, please welcome Brad Tessel! Oh, hello everybody! Welcome to the Virtual Comedy Show. I am I'm just outside of Cozumel, Mexico, one of my favorite oh. places on the planet's Earth. This is the virtual comedy show with our original founder, Steve Goody. Everybody is always here starting and doing the tech. And the reason we all get up in the morning, Patty Vasquez. Yeah. Is she I, here? Yeah, I don't know if she's here yet. Somebody message her. Pat. Everybody message Patty. To I'm going to message her right now. She doesn't get her five cents if she doesn't do it. I'm Brad <laughs> Tassel, and I'm sitting off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in a uh, carnival cruise cabin. Actually, uh, I'm in a passenger cabin with my wife. And I haven't been up to my regular cabin. It's really uh, nicer than most of the cabins. So thank you, Carnival. <laughs> and I'm going to tell everybody live. Hey, it's Rob. I'm going to tell everybody live on air. Carnival, the food, and I love all the cruise lines I work for, and the food's great. But Carnival has stepped it up. The food is amazing. And I want to mm. thank you, Carnival Cruise Lines. And our amazing headliner is right behind me on the bunk because we're sharing a cabin this cruise. And... Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, and when you work <laughs> with Mark Yaffe, you want to get every second you can with him. <laughs> uh, we have a superior program for you tonight. And you've already heard, we have the amazing comedy mind and famous dry bar and TikTok comedian, Mark Yaffe. And our musical guest is the amazing and funny Todd Chappelle, everybody, of course. And we are taking bets as to whether Todd will be in a basement or not. So uh, if you need us to call help for you there, Todd, let us know. This... <laughs> is March 4th, 2024. This is our, Steve? 199th episode. 199th show. Can you believe it? Wow. And uh, this still hasn't healed. Wow. Anyway, but wow. uh, <laughs> I just noticed that that's a the <laughs> Yeah, they said, they said it's our four-year anniversary coming up in just, what, two weeks at the most. And Something they, like yeah, they said it couldn't be done. They said there's no way it could work, but we did it here at the Virtual Comedy Show. We have succeeded in wasting an hour of thousands of people's <laughs> weeks that they could have been productive. That's how we, you know, some say during the pandemic, the vaccine took five months longer to perfect because of this show. That's what, <laughs> they, that's what they say. This is the perfect show to, to, to distract you. And now many are lamenting that the virtual comedy show is the reason Democrats or Republicans are taking so long to pass border control legislation. Uh, yes. And worse yet, the virtual comedy show is the reason Trump's on the ballot, we found out today. So that's nice. We are singly responsible for the slow reaction to climate change. That's all there is to it. Man. All because of a cleverly worded top 10 and hard hitting patty melt and uh, and these <laughs> jokes. OK, so here we go. Let's get into the jokes. And by the way, Brick Manley could have been here, but he said he couldn't. So here you go. All right, here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard last week. Some of these are a little old because I wrote them five days ago. Here we go. <laughs> the Coast Guard last week pulled over a boat where they found 143 pounds of cocaine. Yeah. Wow, I know. They had to tread carefully as they searched the boat as the seas were rough. And there's nothing more dangerous than a seasick bear. <laughs> I will never stop doing that joke. Whenever cocaine is found, there will be a bear cocaine joke, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Except for this one. <laughs> Authorities were also called. Did you see this? Authorities were called to the home of Donald Trump Jr. 
because he received an envelope containing white powder along with a death threat in the mail. Did you see that? Scary. Uh, the police are studying the note for any clue to the sender and would have tested the powder, but Don Jr. snorted it all up before they got there. So. <laughs> nope. Okay, great. Because he's a snorter of powder. All right. Hey, wow, this one's really amazing. Uh, and uh, I changed the punchline because Janet suggested it and I thought it was funnier. So here you go. <laughs> Invasive species scientists are getting help clearing the Everglades of pythons in a weird way. Alice, you're into the science. Have you heard about this? Yep. They, they're they using horny male snakes. <laughs> <laughs> they're placing trackers on male pythons and setting them loose. And then they find, they find what is called a mating ball. Mm -hmm. which is a pile of male and female snakes all writhing together in a huge pile. Researchers found one such pile to be seven feet wide with snake heads and tails in every directions. And they find <laughs> these mating balls. It's amazing. They find these mating balls and it helps them collect and remove large numbers of snakes and stop females from having up to 40 babies at a time. Mm -hmm. after, oh seeing, after seeing this first mating pile, one scientist said, honey, we're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was the punchline Janet suggested. <laughs> my punchline my punch was, honey, I've got an idea for the next house party. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> hers was better. Isn't that sad? Okay. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, we, all, we don't live like the billionaires. Billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and many others, along with Ivanka Trump and U.S. business leaders, are rushing to India right now to attend a wedding at the home of the richest man in Asia. His name is Mukesh Ambani. Uh, the three-day event will be marked by lavish luxury and over-the-top entertainment, and it'll cul culminate in a beautiful ceremony. Not the wedding, the part where they all laugh together and toast a hundred thousand dollar champagne. Champagne that they're doing this, and half of America is eating frosted flakes for dinner. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of words in that one. <laughs> it was almost entirely words. It was almost entirely. It's the words never stop, as as Nate Bogatze says. <laughs> By the way, Ivanka Trump attended the wedding of an Italian businessman, Murkesh Ambani, where every guest was super rich and a successful celebrity, super rich and successful. When they asked Ivana, Ivanka where her father was, why he did not attend, she said, did you hear the part about being rich? <laughs> and no, he can't borrow $455 billion. <laughs> Even though it's a million, million dollars. Oh, did you see this? JetBlue and Spirit Airlines have ended their bid to merge into an airline experts were calling super mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> They're not doing it. <laughs> so, so still no news, though. There's still no news on whether Frontier Airlines will merge with their nearest competitor, that guy who pedals the tricycle taxi bike at Puerto Maya. <laughs> that's their closest competitor. And I saw those today out on the dock. So that's good. All right. So, ah, oh, I just read that one. Let's move up. Hey, <laughs> now everybody knows this now because this has been days, but I wrote it before consumers are calling for an april boycott the bo boycott let's talk about it consumers are calling for an april boycott and the hashtag let them eat flakes is trending after kellogg's the ceo remember this multimillionaire gary plinkett told poor people since they can't afford real food just eat kellogg's cereal for dinner that was joy that was nice man and with the nutritional value of every kellogg cereal the company suggests for dessert Insulin, <laughs> <laughs> which you can get from Janice because she gives it to her cat. I made a cat, man. You have a cat with that. So, that, by the way, weird. and and to go again, there's a lot of savings because Biden has kept insulin at thirty five dollars. So that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, a company spokesman, when asked how eating cereal for dinner every night would affect the nation's children, he said, "They're sick." <laughs> that was fun wasn't it
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this one, it's getting a little, it's, this is a little long, but I still, man, Wendy's is backpedaling faster than Lance Armstrong in a French <laughs> plasma center. <laughs> <laughs> Old people, we got it. I think that I think that means something. I don't know if that even means anything, but but he they're backpedaling after the burger chain announced, as you all know, it was going to mirror Uber's practice of surge pricing during peak times. Uh, a spokesman for the chain responded to the attempt to raise prices after 55 years. Do you think this hair is still naturally red? <laughs> Die costs money, fella. Okay, it's true. That's Wendy. Oh, she's, she's mean. Wendy's mean. Okay, my daughter did not like this joke. <laughs> Tell me if you what get you it. Do? Here you go. I'm doing it anyway. Bitcoin is nearing its all time high of $60,000. Uh, can you believe that? In trading last week, 60000 It surged after many coins were lost after being eaten by Dogecoin. Because ah. <laughs> he's a dog. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, now uh, Oprah Winfrey is leaving Weight Watchers, leaving the Weight Watchers board to concentrate on other projects. The mm -hmm. media mogul commented, Damn it, I'm hungry. Stead me, get me some bread. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now, did you all see that the struggling lunar lander Odysseus, which I talked about last week, sent its last photo to Earth as its power supply died because its solar panels couldn't face the sun after it had fallen over, landing on the moon. As it slowly yeah. lost consciousness, it managed to get out one last selfie doing Riz face. <laughs> <laughs> he then said, peace out. Peace out. <laughs> and this is my favorite joke of the week. 50 Cent has written and will release a suspense novel based on the financial world called Accomplice. Okay. Yeah, 50 Cent has written that book. The novel is being hailed by bookshops saying it's the first time a book's author will be the same as how much they can sell it for. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, full disclosure, I'm going to buy that book. It sounds really good, but I couldn't help yeah, 50 it. 50 Cent, I mean, you can't lose too much. <laughs> yeah, you can't lose too much. Yeah, but no, it's going to cost more than 50 cents. But anyway. <laughs> oh, hey, Super Tuesday is tomorrow. Yay, right? Yay. And expect Trump, expect Trump to win all the Republican primaries. And according to him, 32 governorships, 12 mayorals, and 17 Powerballs. Going to be fantastic. <laughs> I've won more than anyone ever. Yep, he suddenly got old. Okay, let me see if I can. I'm going to skip that one because it was on the Supreme Court ruling and I'm mad. And uh, <laughs> here we go. I'll do this one and then we'll go away. Even though I don't think there's a joke here, but I got to talk about it. Did you see this today? If you ever missed George Santos news, Lauren Boebert is not having a good week. Uh, <laughs> oh, the simple days of a handy at Beetlejuice are over <laughs> for the sweet little Muppet and the little dumb Muppet she is. Not only was her 18-year-old son arrested for multiple felonies, but she missed a campaign stop because her... Ex-drunken felon abusive husband said he threw all her stuff into a pond. Ooh. Is that crazy? <laughs> now, Bobert will probably lose her bid for Congress this year, but don't worry. With all this family activity, she secured a reality show called No Way You'll Keep Up With the Boberts. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steve, come on in. That's a Brad Tassel right there. Alice, That's good. a Brad Tassel right Ooh. there. Yay. Or there, as far as I can see. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. That was wonderful. I like it when you're, a, when you're in a, on a ship and obviously you're surrounded by cabins. You don't want to be loud and wake people up. I like when you talk in the in the more dramatic voice that you're you using. Like the, do you like this kind of lean in kind of? Yeah, speech. and I like the thing on your nose too. I like the whole package. Yeah, I, 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 nice. pulled a, I, I grabbed, I pulled a thing out and I ripped skin off. So yeah, I understand. It works. It's working it's not the cocaine at all. No. So. <laughs> All there right. wasn't a bear. All hey, right. Do your thing and I'll see if I can actually take me out. That'll be great. Here we go.
Hey, everybody. As Brad mentioned, this is our 199th episode. Next week is the big 200, and you don't want to miss that. It's going to be full of extra fun and uh, and some trivia questions and some prizes. And Bob's going to Bob's going to do a little hula dance. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, but tonight is the 199. And so our top 10 category tonight is top 10 things we've learned in 199 Zoom shows. That's right. You know, we don't just do this for fun. It's educational as well for us, hopefully for you as well. So these are the top 10 things we've learned in 199 Zoom shows. Number 10, Zoom can give you a mustache and Zoom can take away your mustache. But Zoom's waxing option is not worth the extra fee. (laughs) Brazilian. Exactly. Number nine. Whether the audience knows it or not, we do our best shows without pants. <laughs> Number eight. Whether our pants know it or not, we do our best shows without an audience. <laughs> <laughs> we've learned a lot. Number seven. If you lined up all the laughs we've gotten in 199 shows, that's nearly two and a half minutes of laughter. <laughs> or just two, if I'd read it correctly. Oh, all right. Number six. It was probably a mistake to connect our Donate to the Comedians button to that Trump NFT thing. (laughs) We've learned our lesson. These are the top 10 things we've learned in 199 Zoom shows. Number five. Steve learned how to bleep every other word, making Brad very jealous. That's right. Oh, God, if I could bleep. Number four. Brad learned how to do two shows at once in two time zones, one of them in the middle of the Atlantic while playing the ukulele and dancing the can-can. <laughs> That's our Brad. That's dedication right there. That's right. Number three. Patty learned that her best broadcasts come from behind the wheel, preferably on the Dan Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. We all learned to turn off the video before picking our noses. <laughs> That was a hard lesson, but we did learn it. Bob's doing it right now. (laughs) He is not. He was. And the number one thing we've learned in 199 Zoom shows. Zoom sing-alongs are the best. (laughs) Oh, it was a sarcastic top ten. Not a real Maybe so. Hard to say. Got it. I thought it was real things. I haven't really worked that out. Sarcasm isn't my thing, you know. (laughs) Yes, but is finding Patty your thing? I bugged her. Is she here? I fi- no, she's here. Oh, I there she is. There she's right there. Bring there her on Patty. in. Hey, Patty. You didn't Patty. bug me, by the way. I didn't? No. Oh, did I alert you? Did I do anything? You nudged. You nudged. nudged. It's not okay. bugging. You nudged. You nudged. Well, yeah. it's a Jewish thing. I nudged. Cajoled. Nudged. The important thing is that you're here. Hello. Yeah. Let's do the thing, and then you do the thing. It's time What's for a Patty Melt. With Patty Vasquez, Patty Vasquez. From global conflicts to greenhouse gases, the folks refusing to wear masks says, and politicians getting caught grabbing asses says, she's melting down. It's a Patty Vasquez, Patty Melt. After a nudge. <laughs> After a nudge. You know what's so sad is last week I was on right as you guys launched it, and the whole time Brad was like, I don't know if Patty's here. Is Patty here? I don't know. And I was there, but I didn't say anything. I didn't want to be like, I've been here the whole time. I didn't want to be that girl. And then this time I was I was not here. And, you and can be I, that girl. I, be all the girls. I, I'm that girl. You're I, so I'm, Marlo I'm, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I felt bad because I, I was like, oh, do the show. Look, I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago. The weather here is so weird. I mean, it's gorgeous. It was 75 degrees today. Um, I, we walked outside. It was so warm. Steve goes, it's hard to believe it's only six more months till Christmas. That's <laughs> <laughs> how much it feels like July already. It's it, and, and here's the thing. There are birds here that just look so incredibly confused. Like they're walking <laughs> They're walking up this like this isn't okay, right? And I think that's what they're saying. Um, but yeah, they're very confused. They flew in, they're all gathering, they're at the park across the street. I see the meetings every day. Do we stay? Do we go? We go like south, we go north. I don't know because which way's warm is cold. There was like there were like seven feet of snow somewhere that's not like what in Nevada, what mm-hmm. is happening? Um, all I have to say is what's great about Chicago is that we roll with this. 
Uh, we, look, if there was a tornado with a blizzard inside of it, we'd be like, yeah, sure, this feels about right. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you, I think that everybody needs to start feeling or responding to decisions by the Supreme Court as though they were Chicagoan just thinking about the weather. You have to go, when they make a bad choice, you go, yeah, okay, sure, that's going to happen. Just like when it's, it was last week, it was 70 degrees one day, 14 degrees of the wind chill the next day. You have to start thinking of the Supreme Court like Chicago weather. <laughs> yeah, it makes total sense. <laughs> this, this makes total sense. It, because it, you know what? I am, I'm really upset today too, but I'm not upset as much with the decision by the Supreme Court because they move awfully fast when it's something that's going to help Trump, don't they? Mm -hmm. Man, they're yeah. like, oh, look, let's go help him out. And then when it's something where it might hurt him, they're like, Oh, we don't have time today. We're going to wait till April. <laughs> so here's what, here's my melt today, you guys. Uh, it's no one is coming to save us. The Supreme court, whatever you thought might have been like there, any sort of legitimacy. It's, it's not even just now, if you think about it, because apparently I am now a uh, living history, uh, original reference because my son, who is a sophomore in college is like, Hey, so when it was Gore v. Bush, what was that like? I'm like, Oh my God. Hmm. Uh, so what he's been telling me from his research is that Sandra Day O'Connor didn't want to retire with a Democrat in the white house. And she was the one that whipped the votes for Bush, uh, to beat Gore and for them to stop the count. This wow. is not, you guys, we, <laughs> there are other things I've been learning, but like, Here's the thing. Um, and, and today I had someone told me that they're still mad at, at uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I get that because they always move the goalposts. All I'm saying is no one's coming to save us. <laughs> uh, I, I've been checking my, my dual citizenship uh, possibilities, Ireland or Mexico, neither one. <laughs> uh, so that's not going well. Everything's fine. It's all great, you guys. Uh, <laughs> no one's coming to save us except for us. We have to vote. We have to tell everyone to vote. We have to send postcards and text your friend. I don't know. I don't know when that point of bothering your friends starts, but uh, bother them to the point of not voting for the other guy. That's all I'm asking. Uh, because holy crap, you guys! It's 70 degrees in Chicago on March 4th. We're fine. Everything's fine. Everything's freaking fine. Have a great night. So you're telling us to do it again, people. Steve. Look at you. I hit a button. I hit a button. That's all I did. Right. Well, you see, when we do things at the same time, as you should know, 199 episodes in, when we do things at the same time, things go nuts. There's there we go. Patty. So, Patty, so, you're saying nudge. Nudge is where we open with and nudge is what we close with. Nudge. And, and, and don't... And, and, and don't uh, try not to be emotion to try to take it emotionally yeah. when they make choices like today with the Supreme Court. We can't. We don't yeah. have time for them. We don't have time. And wait till the immunity thing that. happens. That's going to be a weird. They're going to yeah. whatever. Just you know what? Keep doing the work. It's going to just assume it's going to happen, Brad. Assume yeah. that they're going to say a president can do whatever he wants. And of course, yeah. we're not going to. Well, here's the, the problem. Thing. Wait a minute, though. If the Supreme Court says the president has immunity from prosecution. Biden could immediately kill Donald Trump. Not that That's I'm true. advocating anybody killing anybody, and he would be fine because he go. I or he could just revoke his citizenship. You can't. You can't be president if you're not a citizen. You yeah, yeah, take away his citizenship. You know, or just put him in jail. You know, because now you're in Putinville. What's yeah. what's the pro what's the problem there though? Well, I don't know. Republicans, I mean, Democrats never do the crap. No, of course. No, they never do the dishonest thing. thing. That's right. They not always. Never. Not never. I'm not, not saying never. never. Yeah, that we got stuff. Bob Hoskins that... or whatever his name is there. Bob Menendez, yeah. whatever. The, but, uh, yeah, I'm not... yeah, Bob Hoskins. He's the problem. I hate that. No. Do you know that Roger <laughs> Rabbit? <laughs> Son of a bitch. So... We don't block <laughs> Supreme Court appointment hearings. We don't do like no. the. Yeah, we don't do that stuff. And, and executing our. One of yeah. these days we'll learn. Be be great. All right, thanks, Patty. <laughs> I'm depressed and scared. Let's move on. Wait, there was something about, oh, about citizenship. You can move to Mexico anytime you want. They'll they'd be glad to have you. That's right. Right. Bob Hoskins yeah. was British. Good point. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I really <laughs> glad we're back on that. Yeah. All right. I think hey, that's the most what? important thing that we need to hear right now is that Bob. Hoskins no, what we really need to hear is Todd Chappelle. Yay! Are you saying? Oh well, Patty. Wait a minute. I'll get rid of Patty. Okay, if you must. Thank you, Patty. Well, she got rid of herself. Hi, Todd. Hi, Todd. Hi, how are you? We're just Everybody great, thanks. We're here? scared. We're it's worried. You're scared. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't be scared. Okay, I won't be it's scared. It's great to be Make here. Make us less scared. Virtual. 
Yeah, do something silly. What we're going to do is, as you know, we're going to run this little intro. Then you're going to play a song that I've got to answer it somehow. I have no idea what you're about to do. And then you'll do another song. Here we go. It's our musical guest. Our musical guest. Gonna <coughs> sing something funny and then Steve will play something in between. Our musical guest. Our musical guest. It's time for our musical guest. The Not Scary Todd Chappelle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to brag, but I recently became a member of a very exclusive group called AARP. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Yeah, talk, about, talk about scary. Now, as an AARP member, I was recently offered uh, the chance to get early access to Rolling Stones tickets. Yeehaw. <laughs> so I thought, you know, if the Rolling Stones are going after an AARP audience, then really maybe they should change some of their lyrics to appeal to an AARP audience. So this is this is my attempt to do that with some uh, Rolling Stones snippets here. Uh, I've sent this to their management. Haven't heard anything yet, so. <laughs> she was warm in the month of January. And she sweats in the month of February. But it's all right now. She turned on a fan. <laughs> it's all right. Jumping hot flash. Will it pass, pass, pass? <laughs> I can't get no wheelchair traction. I can't get no wheelchair traction cause I slide and I slide and I slide and I slide I can't get no wheelchair traction you gotta help me up you gotta help me up because I fell down you gotta wake me up Wake me up, I fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> Time ain't on my side. <laughs> no, it ain't. Time ain't on my side. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tried to go in the morning. <laughs> then I tried to go again in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm feeling really constipated. <laughs> well, I might explode if I don't go soon. <laughs> because you can't always poop. When you want, <laughs> you can't always poop when you want. Everybody bring it now. You can't always, always poop when you want. want. Thank you, thank you so much. But if you try sometime, you just might find the poop when you need. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Should be oh. Yay. Hey, that was so good. I'm gonna do just a little bit of my my sleep disorder manifesto. Just a little bit. <laughs> sleep apnea. But dum bum bum. My CPAP never works that good. No good, no good, no good. I can't unwind. But dum bum bum. Would someone please hit me over the head with a sledgehammer? All right, that's enough. <laughs> Back to Todd Chappelle, everybody. Oh, yes. Okay, well, I'm going to do the reverse in this song. So I'm going to do a song where I wrote the music, but not the words. I took a, a list of the 100 worst country song titles of all time, and I put them to music, 
And it goes like this. It goes exactly like this, as a matter of fact. I'd rather pass a kidney stone than another night with you. If you really loved me, then you'd leave. I liked you better before I knew you so well. Baby, you hurt the love right out of me. This match. Don't come home with drinking. With loving on your mind. I hate every bone in your body except mine. Well, I'm so miserable without you. It's just like having you here. Babe, I'm getting gray from being blue. But if you don't leave me, I'll find someone who will. Is it cold in here or is it you? <laughs> I'm just a bug on the windshield of life. If you want to keep the beer cold, put it next to my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, walk out backwards slowly so I'll think you're walking in. <laughs> you're stained, but your heart is pure. <laughs> I'd catch you through the screen door, but it might strain our love. <laughs> I have left the one you left before. <laughs> it's not the high cost of living, but the cost of living high. Get your tongue out of my mouth, because I'm kissing you goodbye. <laughs> if you want to know just how you done me wrong, it's all there in the title of the song. <laughs> Todd Chappelle. Yeah. Always so good. My hair's falling. Thank you, Todd. Todd, where can we see you performing especially. live? Yeah, both those were great. Where can we see you performing live, Todd? Well, I've got a couple um, local gigs coming up. I'm going to be in, uh, if you're in the Philadelphia area, I'm going to be at Dew Point Brewing in Yorkland, Delaware on March 21st. And I'm going to be at the Kennett Flash Theater in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. On April 26th. All right. Cool. And we can find all this information at ToddChappelle.com. Am I correct? ToddChappelle.com. That is exactly right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, joining us, making our lives brighter. Hey, look. Right. Oh, my God. Hey. hey it's Mark Daffy. Mark doesn't look like he's about a foot taller than me. And he looks the, he looks in my size. <laughs> and my head is literally double the size of your it head. It is. His head well, is. Well, when we stand up, when we stand up, Bob is actually taller than me. That's true. That's true. God. Weird. Okay. So, right. okay. Tell them the rules. Okay. Here's the rules. <laughs> I didn't know we had rules. Here's the suggestion. I'm going to play this intro for you. Then you give us 10 minutes to stand up and then we'll tell you how great you are. How's that sound? Okay. Um, I'll, All right. I'll, let's uh, do this. I'll run with that. It's time for a big headliner. Got some funny, funny jokes to say. Oh, do a 10 minute set headliner. Man, I'm so glad that it's Monday. Mark Yaffe. Oh, man. Great to be here, you guys. I, I had a very extensive commute to make it to the uh, ship studios. <laughs> a lot of traffic. I had to, I had to work around two, uh, two uh, housekeeping carts and a family of five double-fisting uh, chocolate yogurt cones. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is nice. I mean, I, well, a little bit about myself. I actually come from an affordable part of California called uh, Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Reno, Nevada. Uh, Vegas got punked. <laughs> and if you know, if you know Nevada, Vegas, we don't get the Vegas shows in Reno. We get the knockoff Vegas shows, right? They have Blue Man Group. We have White Powder Women. <laughs> They have uh, Cirque de Soleil. We have a uh, jerk of the day. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I work all over, all over, uh, including Laughlin, Nevada. Have you been to Laughlin, Nevada? Uh, Vegas on life support. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not familiar with Laughlin, I know many of you are from the uh, Midwest and Vegas. If you're not familiar with Laughlin, Laughlin is uh, located like one hour and 37 years from the Las Vegas Strip. <laughs> <laughs> You walk into a casino in Laughlin, it's like a medical center with slot machines. <laughs> <laughs> See people with heart monitors, uh, IV drips. I saw a guy roll by in a gurney holding a Keno card. 
Are we here to gamble or is there a medical conference about to start? <laughs> My, uh, my last Laughlin gig uh, didn't go so well. I don't know if I'm going back. I was working the uh, 4 p.m. late show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it took a second. Yeah, it took a second. Had a heckler. The heckler yells out from the back of the room, hurry up, we're hungry. <laughs> the last time I worked at the Laughlin House of Laughs on Lasagna. <laughs> Laughlin, Laughlin is a buffet is a contact sport in Laughlin, Nevada. They love their food, right? I've seen two bar fights in my adult life. I've seen four dessert bar fights in Laughlin, Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the bookend is I went from Laughlin to Provo, Utah, the farthest. Because, you know, first of all, let's back up on Nevada. Nevada, if you remember, uh, uh, properly, you're probably aware, Nevada is the only state with 24-hour gambling, 24-hour drinking, legalized marijuana, and legalized prostitution. Hmm. Nevada state motto, we're getting your money one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I go from this Laughlin gig, I end up in Provo, Utah. You guys been to Pro Provo, Utah is so white, the housekeepers speak English. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my first time in Utah, too. I forgot. I, for, I didn't realize Utah is a 70 percent Mormon majority state, hardworking, church going folks. I didn't realize how Mormon the state of Utah was till I got in my rental car, got on the I-15 leaving the Salt Lake City Airport carpool lane, uh, seven or more passengers. <laughs> <laughs> but I like being back on the ship or as I like to call it, the uh, floating feeding frenzy. I don't. I do not have uh, Brad's uh, uh, discipline on when it comes to food. I eat so much. My last crusade to loosen my socks. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah, the face recognition on my phone stopped working. <laughs> I was at my doctor visit. You know, between cruises, I'm like, Doc, I got to lose some weight. I got to do something. He goes, Yeah, Mark, you need to. Uh, you need to do to set some goals for yourself. Maybe do a marathon. So uh, a couple of days ago, I did uh, five and a half hours of Yellowstone straight through. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I am in shape. I didn't have to pee once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's the food, right? I I, I just I, I love Asian food too. They got some great Asian food on this cruise too. They have a. Uh, um, a lot of uh, my favorite Chinese food. I mean, that's amazing. It's, I've been to 43 states and 11 countries. And if there's a town or city with at least 500 people, there's at least one Chinese restaurant. Think about it. <laughs> Chinese people have populated every corner of the globe in order to bring us orange chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, if we went to the North Pole tonight, we'd find a Panda Polar Express. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now there's this uh, chain of Chinese restaurants without <laughs> Chinese people. Uh, you guys may have heard of it, P.F. Chang's. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this P.F. Chang's? That is not authentic Chinese food. They don't even have Mexican cooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get out, exercise more, eat less, do some outdoor activities. You know, and this is the beauty of working on cruise ships because it's a year round in the Caribbean. We can go out and work on the play on the beach and hike and stuff. But I just got back from Minnesota. These people, I'm not sure why there's year round activities in Duluth, Minnesota, right? It was minus like 34 degrees. And these people are out there engaging in their winter sports activities, snowmobiling, ice fishing, binge drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually an outdoor kid growing up because uh, I'm from the 1900s. It was the law. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was not an outdoor dad. My dad took his camping one time once. He put up that tent at four. It was a tarp by five. We were in a motel six by seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not an outdoor guy. He was not a DIY guy. Right? The only thing I ever saw him fix was a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> One time I had my, my bicycle chain broke or I had a flat or something. I go in the house, say, Dad, can I have a screwdriver? 
he looks at me and goes, what are you, what are you talking about? You're only 11 and we're out of vodka. <laughs> Stacy, yeah. yeah my Watching my brother's in. show on Zoom. Oh, Get him, Brad. Oh, my brother's <laughs> letting him know about the show. That's, okay. That's nice. He's, he's, bringing in some more people. he's bringing in some more people. That's nice. That's nice. That's man. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Your servers. <laughs> so, um, I was talking about my parents, my dad. Uh, my mom and dad, we moved them to one of these, uh, a couple of years ago, we moved them out of their house to one of these independent senior living communities, which is just like a college dorm with a little less alcohol and way more drugs. <laughs> Prescriptions. My mom personally has enough medication to stock three Coachellas and a Lindsay Lohan relapse party. <laughs> the, lady, the lady takes five pills to remember to take her other 10 pills. <laughs> I, I may not inherit any uh, money when they pass, but I'm going to inherit a boatload of Lipitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad. My dad actually uh, did pass away about uh, 14 months ago. He uh, uh, he passed away at 95. Had a great life. When he, when he passed away, they put in the community newsletter at their apartment. Bud Yaffe died unexpectedly at 95. <laughs> <laughs> On what? <laughs> Did, no, you didn't see his diet and his smoking habits. He lived unexpectedly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who, how is that? What is the, the average age of life expectancy at my parents' community? Is what I want to know. Is there a Methuselah on site uh, raising the average? <laughs> <laughs> And my poor mom, you know, it's, it's a tough because she lost my dad and she's got the dementia now. And that's a tough one to deal with if you have family members dealing with it. I think I'm doing pretty well, though, because uh, uh, I live with the uh, college roommate that dropped a lot of acid. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she's uh, um, in that stage where they say, well, I don't know if she yeah, she's in the state where they say the average dementia patient in her situation, she's not full. Uh, to end of end of life spectrum, she's somewhere in the middle. She, they say, the average dementia patient, uh, them every day is like one year, hmm. which makes sense because she reads the paper three hundred sixty five times. Wow! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she, uh, um, like a lot of dementia patients, she says she keeps getting robbed. This is a common thing with dementia patients. Yeah. So in the last six months, someone's taken her iron her throw rug, a hand towel, and a cake mixer. So evidently someone's trying to open a, uh, a bed and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> My parents raised me in Los Angeles, which is weird. When I lived in LA, we lived in a like a regular neighborhood, but a couple blocks from our house, there was horse properties. And you would see people in Los Angeles on horseback come riding around. I went to visit mm -hmm. recently. And this guy pulls up to me at a red light on a horseback. He's wearing the, the, the cowboy boots, the tight jeans, the belt buckle, the, the Stetson, and a rapper, a Snoop Dogg t-shirt. This guy was hip hop and clip clock. <laughs> <laughs> My ex-wife uh, and I, we actually had a horse for a while. Yeah, but she, uh, anyone, you got any of you guys on one of these four-legged money pits? <laughs> <laughs> A horse is like, you, a, like, I call it a land yacht is what a horse is right there. A horse is the only pet you buy its food by the ton. A horse will kick, bite, buck, and bankrupt you in one afternoon. I'm like, honey, I did the math. We can either send the girls to a private four-year university and medical school or keep the horse another six weeks. <laughs> and my ex-wife loved this horse. She loved it. She, and the horse hated her. It was kick her and bite her and buck her off. And she, she wouldn't get rid of the horse. She tried everything. She tried new saddle, new feed, new bit, new horseshoes. She got so desperate. She uh, Finally, she hired a horse psychic. Now, let's <laughs> for Clydesdales. <laughs> <laughs> and the day of the uh, of the horse psychic appointment, um, it's five minutes to 10. Like, where's your horse psychic? She goes, oh, it's a, it's a phone appointment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I kid you not, 10 minutes later, she's out in the field holding up a, a, a portable phone, walking in circles around the horse so the psychic could get in touch with its inner pony, evidently. <laughs> yes. 
45 minutes and $125 later, we found out the, hoarder, hoar, the horse was perfectly fine. Owner, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you having me. Okay. Mark Epping! We got to turn off the thing so they can see us both. Right. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of the background. Unblur yourself. Unblur myself so I can get rid of the background. But, man, that was... Put, put mustaches on both of you. That's what I'm about. Zoom, God, you're killing me right now. Zoom is downloading something. Oh, oh what the this. heck? Zoom, oh, totally makes God. sense. Have we lost everything right That's now? That's all right. We can see all of Mark and some of you. Oh, my God. <laughs> now you're frozen. Zoom is down... Oh, no. The... the the program is not responding. Oh. Are we back? Oh, we're back. <laughs> oh, my God. We almost were off. Oh, my God. We almost I wondered off. what the technical problem would be. It was Halloween. It was Halloween. <laughs> like, is, that, is that what happened? Something yeah. Halloween that was downloaded. fantastic. That was kind of so fun. Huh? That's what you call jokes, everybody. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is what you call oh, and nice perfect, job, perfect for this venue because no one tells a joke and then waits for the laugh that you know is coming, yeah, that was fantastic. That was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. That was fun, man. Thanks for having me back on. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, next week, what do you got? Just, uh, wait, John Trentes, you still here? I'm still here. When did we book you again? Good night. April everybody. 1st. <laughs> April 1st. Okay, you're bumped again. Let's move on. <laughs> Mark will be back. I apologize, John. <laughs> uh, sorry, John. Yeah, we're we're sorry, ran John. over. Yeah, we're, we're in the sorry, affiliates. John. We're going uh, late. Yes, I was gonna say I was gonna tell you ask you something else that uh, uh, that you said that was uh, all of it was fantastic, and we've been having great shows here too, just just phenomenal shows. Nobody, I I told uh, Mark, nothing makes me happier than to watch a show on a ship, and I don't know what anybody in the audience does for a living at the end, and that is, <laughs> I don't know what I don't know how many people have dogs or cats. Or, we, we do know what they do on uh, a carnival cruise, and that's drink. Yes, drink. Yes, they got the fifteen drink. Your fifteen drink jokes. Who so, wanted to know where in the L.A. area did you live close to the horse? I grew up in uh, San Fernando Valley, a place, a little section of L.A. called Arlita. Oh, East Valley. twenty minutes from me. Oh, where are you? That was horse zone. That zone for horses. It was in some of the uh, nearby wow. streets. It was weird. It was like there's just these little pockets of horse property. Just, oh, are okay. you are you 20 minutes from there by horse? Yeah, I was <laughs> actually I was the horse thing. You know, the horse was so much per month. They said it's it's like owning a 1990s uh, uh, Jaguar that that we had yeah. for <laughs> we about three thousand a week into the that Jaguar. That my wow. wife still bad. So you want to promote anything before we? Yeah, go? where can we see you? Market? If you want to uh, go to my website, it's Laugh with Mark M A R C. My parents couldn't spell. Uh, I just came out with a new uh, CD on a comedy album on uh, Punchline Records. It's called Laffy Yaffy, and uh, you can buy a copy of that. Dry bar, and I just did my second dry bar, so that should be out in a few months. Uh, my current dry bar is called Mid Laugh Crisis, and mm -hmm. you can find that if you go to my website. I got a free a link to. Uh, free with commercials or you know you can pay their seven dollars a month or get the first month free whatever they can they always got some special going there they're always hustling mm -hmm. something up right you can watch mine too yes two for one yes. special three right for there. one he's got two of them out <laughs> well the other mm -hmm. one's not out yet but okay we're working on it okay that's enough Good. thank oh. you mark and brad i'm gonna yeah, get rid I'm of you now way. i can't you're right i'm in the way go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. what are you playing next steve uh, here's the next thing we're gonna do it's this is a very new segment that we have it's so new we haven't figured out the music for it but we're calling this our neurodivergent british man on the street at 3 45 a.m local time in england it's our one minute of after hours culture with paul Waity. hi paul Ooh. oh fuck. you got a minute <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Is that you, fellas? Oh, yeah. hi. Hello. Hi. Wait, oh, gee. Hang on a minute. I'm just trying okay. to... Okay. 45 seconds. Oh, hang on. I'm just trying to... He's sleeping. Yeah. 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 What's new in England? <laughs> right. Just a minute. Thank you. You got 30 <laughs> seconds. Don't use it. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. To all my friends in the colonies. Yeah, it's what is it, 3 49 in the bloody morning, and the boys said, Come and join in, it would be such oh, fun. Um, look, it's the shard. Look, there's the hey. shard. Uh, excellent. Anyway, thanks, Paul. We'll check in with you next week. That was fantastic. Oh.
Thank you, Paul. Thank that was great. You. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, 10 seconds. That was Paul Lottie, everybody. And you said that wouldn't work. That's the best part of the show so that far. That was the best part of the show. And it really is in England, and it really is really in the really in London. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that, but I'm going to give it a try. Let's do this thing. How about another dumb song from Steve for no reason? <laughs> oh, I'm still laughing. That was great. You know, he's, still, had he's still doing it. He thinks he's on still. He's he still thinks on. he's on. It's fine. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Let him carry he's, on. He's just not let a cat out. It's all right. Okay, go ahead. Do your song. You can monitor him if you want to, or you can watch this. It's time for another song. Last week I did a new song, and uh, this week I made a video of it. So I'm just going to share it with you because we're still not done with Alabama and all that nonsense. So here's this. Welcome to Alabama. What? You're pregnant or you froze some eggs? Uh, sir, you better have the little lady step over here. She's got eggs, and we know how to use them. That's what Alabama says. If anybody spooches them. Babies, we've been frozen and microscopic. And any thought of the mother's health or of curing some disease, by God, we're gonna stop it. Yeah. She's gonna carry that baby, even if she's still a baby. Girls got no rights, this embryo has rights. Until she grows up to be a woman, then she's a brood mare. Who's made to be a mommy? We don't care about her bodily autonomy. Started up America. He made our national religion. Didn't want to separate church and state. Now you get back in the kitchen. She'll be fine. She'll have eight or nine. Girls got no rights. Honey, let the embryo have a turn on the seesaw. She's got eggs, but the state really owns them. We got new rules and regs. About them, they're fallopians. Enjoy her downgrade. Commanders love their handmaids. If you thought it couldn't happen here, <laughs> hey buddy, hold my beer. If she don't like government in her body, we'll get her a lobotomy. Girls got no rights. Thank you, alt right. You wanna go to the slammer? But don't you raise no queers around here. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Yay. I don't seem to be there. Where am I? I don't know. Where are you? I'm right here. Are you in England? Great. How's it now? Get that yeah, out there. That's Thanks. Awesome. Working on it. All right. Guess what? It's time to beg for money. There it is. Brad begs for money. Hey, we need your money. We don't charge a cover for a two-drink minimum. So what did you expect, Jack? You know, every week uh, we have some people that give money to this show, and it and we thank them 100%. But this is the week you there at Facebook and you <laughs> that have decided you're not giving us money to send us money because we've just learned that Paul Waddy's in trouble <laughs> and he needs help. <laughs> Although we're not giving him any of the money, but that's okay. <laughs> he gets nothing. <laughs> But, well, if we get enough, we'll give him some money. So go to virtualcomedyshow.com and you can help, uh, help Mark Gaffey's oh, mom, who has dementia, <laughs> that seems sad, doesn't it? And uh, help, help climate change. And just just go to virtualcomedyshow.com and just give us money. That's all I have to say. That's it. Enough. All right, let's do the worst joke of the week. Do it. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Ooh, that was the worst joke ever. <laughs> had fun this week everybody that was really this has been fun this is two weeks in a row not that the other shows are bad but the two weeks in a row that have been some amazing stuff comics especially crispy cream here's the worst joke crispy cream will give away two free donuts to anyone on super tuesday march 5th you just have to walk in and use the promo code tuesday spelled t-w-o and then you have to take the donuts over and shake them in the face of that redheaded windy skank. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, that was the virtual comedy show. We learned a lot of stuff we didn't need to know. Like Steve's favorite mushroom is a portobello. Yep. That's what you get when you watch this show. Fascinating, isn't it? We have a lot of fun at the virtual 
actual comedy show. It's better than sitting home playing with your toes or going to the dump to watch stuff decompose. Keep coming back to the virtual comedy show. We hope you enjoy the virtual comedy show. You don't have to dress up, no, 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 no. You can be like Braddock Commando. Every Monday it's the virtual comedy show. See you Monday at the virtual comedy show. It's at www.virtualcomedyshow.com. It worked!